Hi guys, in this series of videos we'll start by looking at internal energy and then the first law of thermodynamics, then we'll look at molecules, temperature and the zeroth law, temperature scales. So let's start by looking at internal energy. So what is the energy of a glass of water? Now we've talked about energy um, already and so we, we normally ask well what's the, the glass doing? Is it moving? Are we in a gravitational field? Um, and, and from that we could calculate its kinetic energy and its gravitational potential energy. If we knew its mass and we knew it was moving in a certain velocity we'd know it'd have k of a half mv squared. If we knew it'd been displaced by uh, delta h in a, in a gravitational field we know that it'd have gpe um, equals mg delta h. But but what if neither of those things have happened? What if we're, we're just sitting on the ground or we're not in a gravitational field at all and, and we're not moving, the glass of water stationary, just sitting on a table? Um, does the glass of water have no energy? Uh, and so far we'd, we'd probably say yes because that's the only kind of energy we talk about. But, but actually, even if it's not, what if there still is some energy in there? And it turns out there is. Um, if you zoom in on some water, uh, on a glass of water, on a, on a tiny point, you'll actually see that it's made up of molecules um, all moving about and, and interacting through potentials, and we've done that in there. We see that we've started off with this 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 normal placid glass of water, but we've zoomed in on a tiny section, and we see that suddenly we've got all these, these water molecules, which I've drawn as these blue spheres here, um, moving around with these red arrows, but they've also got these intermolecular forces in, um, influencing them as well. They've got forces that are, that are causing them to want to, to pull towards each other and also repel each other in certain places too. So there's there's complicated dynamics going on and then what seems stationary and placid isn't actually the case. So in fact, what we still see is that it still has kinetic energy and potential energy. We, we just can't see it. Now you might think, great, we can just call it kinetic energy and potential energy and, and move on with our lives, but we don't do that because it's it's clearly of a different nature to the kind of kinetic energy we've seen so far. It's not observable um, and it's not practical for us as humans to talk about it in the same way we talk about regular kinetic energy or regular potential energy. So what we do is call it its internal energy. And in fact, um, it was possible to do this without knowing anything about molecules at all. And in fact, this is what was done. Um, the, the, the history of thermal physics is that people understood a lot about thermodynamics which is the name for this this field of study before they knew that molecules even existed or that atoms existed and they were able to formulate something called internal energy by just thinking what happens if we heat up a glass of water which we'll talk about in a moment and the energy changes there to decide that there must be this internal energy in so shape with water even if you didn't know any of this luckily uh, we, we do know about this now and so it makes it easier to understand what's going on because it is something we've encountered before it is just kinetic energy and potential energy that we already know about but it, it is qualitatively different as well hey guys to continue watching this video and unlock hundreds of other super concise and exam board specific A-level physics videos, just click the snap revised smiley face. Join me today and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.